Finding the way. Finding the way every week. Tell us what Buffalo Bill. Yeah. Yeah. No overthinking, right? Go play some ball. Go play some football. It's an exciting time to be a Buffalo Bill and a fan of the Buffalo Bills. Hello, everybody. Welcome into the Sean McDermott Show presented by Kaleida Health. Coach, thanks again for spending some time with us here today. You know, it's after a tough loss in overtime in New York, we on, you know, on the radio show and around the big, and the fans, we all ride this emotional roller coaster where, you know, we're ready, you know, people have to talk us off the ledge. How do you keep your team from overreacting to a week one loss, as close as it was, in a difficult environment as it was? How do you keep your team from riding that emotional roller coaster? Well, it's a long season, number one. And number two is it's the beginning of the year. So I think it's about the journey of the season and can you develop through the course of the season to become better each and every week. And that takes keeping one's confidence, but it also takes truth-filled conversations of, hey, this is where we need to adjust our game and the areas where we need to grow. So you get into this game, Aaron Rodgers, they come in, it's the hype, they're riding that hype train, it's 9-11, and Aaron comes in, fourth snap, and he goes down, Zach Wilson comes in. That's got to change the dynamic. And now that you're the defensive coordinator as well, how does that change that dynamic for your defense? Well, you're playing a different game when, when Zach's – uh, there compared to when Aaron's there, just from an experience standpoint. Let's just start there. And and so um, the game was managed differently um, for us and for them. And uh, that's what we expected. And and the plays that they were calling were probably different with Zach under center than with Aaron. So uh, unfortunate loss for them. And uh, I thought we did a fairly decent job on defense, giving ourselves a chance. Uh, and that's what, you, that's what you look for. Yeah, well, you think you were calling defensive plays for the first time in a while in the regular season. You held them to 289 total yards, really just 16 points. How was it for you getting back, calling the defense? What did you think of the overall performance by your defense and how it went on for you on the sidelines with the staff? Yeah, it was good to uh, to get the first one on back underneath my belt in terms of the game, calling a real game. And I thought the defense, again, gave us a chance to win. That's what you want. Didn't like the big run or two that we right. gave up and because uh, that gave them three points on the board. Much work to do there as well as we get into the second week of the season. So you go in with these linebackers Matt Mil on two ends of the spectrum. Matt Milano, the all-pro guy who's a game wrecker. And then you've got a guy who's an unknown, Terrell Bernard. Bernard led the team with 11 tackles. What did you think about the way Bernard played particularly because he's the new face and, of course, Milano? Well, I thought he was very active. He did a good job getting us lined up, which, as you know, as a middle linebacker, that's part of the job description. That's really where it starts, leadership and, and the operation piece. And uh, he did a good job with that. And then I think he found his knack and rhythm during the course of the game. As, as the game was unfolding, he made some plays, got some confidence, and that gives him a foundation going into week two to build from. And of course, a big story coming out of this, the way Josh played, he was despondent after the game. You could see it on his face and his statistics spoke to all of it. How do you go about getting him to bounce back from a game like this and get him back on track? Well, if you if you look at his history a little bit, he tends to bounce back after a game like this. And, and that's what we expect this week. And, and so the bigger thing is that he learns for good what can happen if you don't take care of the football. And, and so, you know, we have so much confidence in Josh and he's such a competitive person. Uh, sometimes that gets the best of him. And so it's about playing winning football first and foremost. And one of the stories of the offseason who shows up big, Steph Diggs, who shows up 10 receptions, 102 yards. He was he was money. I mean, he really played a really good game. What did you think of the way he played? Yeah, he was he was on point. Yeah. Um, he was ready to go. You could tell in warm-ups. He brought a lot of energy to our team in warm-ups even. And his leadership on the sideline was heard and, and seen, and, and that's how it should be. And so he was encouraging Josh throughout the game, encouraging the offense, encouraging the defense and special teams. So... Um, job well done by Steph in the in the first week. Here. So as rough as it got offensively, you turned the ball over three out of four possessions in the second half, or the first four possessions. You get the ball with a buck forty eight to play, one timeout. You go nine plays, forty three yards. Can Josh hit, finds Diggs three times, and how impressed were you with the resolve of them to get that into overtime and that last push, that last drive when. They had sputtered so badly in the second half to put it together and get the game into overtime. Well, that's what they do. That's what we do. We practice that more than anybody probably in the NFL and the two-minute uh, drive, whether it's before half or at the end of the game in this case. And our players and coaches are extremely comfortable in those situations. All right, thanks, Coach. We're going to catch up with you later in the show to get your final thoughts on facing the Raiders in the home opener. 
The Game Plan is presented by Energy Mark. Trust Energy Mark for renewable energy supply. When we come back, Eric Wood and I break down the tape from the season opener against the Jets. Then we take an inside look at the team building philosophy of Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean. Chopping Wood is presented by St. Bonaventure University, an official education partner of the Buffalo Bills. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Sean McDermott Show. It's time now to look back at the tape with our good friend Eric Wood, radio analyst for the Buffalo Bills and former center. E, Bills took a tough loss on the road in overtime to the Jets. What did you take away from this game? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to win any football game when you're minus three in the turnover differential. I thought that Josh had three ill-advised interceptions, and we don't love to analyze bad plays here on Chopping Wood, but we're going to take a look at those today. On the opposite side of the ball, I thought the pass rush was excellent. Something to build off looking towards the rest of the season. I thought Leonard Floyd, in his first action as a Bill, played great, credited with a sack and a half in the game. And then Matt Milano, coming off on all-pro season, had a great game against the Jets. Well, let's start on the defensive side of the ball. And with your boy, Leonard Floyd, he came off the edge early on and made the play that the entire NFL is talking about. Yeah, this is actually just supposed to be a quick release by Rodgers. That's why Dwayne Brown, the left tackle, is, is attempting a cut block, and he does get Leonard Floyd to drop his hands. That's what you're looking for there. But instead, Matt Milano jumps into the area of the slant. Everything's covered, so that allows him time to recover. Unfortunately, Aaron Rodgers goes down with a torn Achilles here, and this is the play that everyone's been watching all day. And a little later, Jordan Phillips got a sack on a third and nine. Take us through this play. Matt Milano's walked up into the A-gap, and so it actually forces the Jets' offensive line to slide in that direction. So generally, the sacks aren't going to come when you have three blockers on two, but the Bills run an excellent stunt here. Jordan Phillips sets up the guard. He makes the inside move. Leonard Floyd then crashes down inside, wipes out the whole right side of the Jets' offensive line. Jordan Phillips wraps around for the sack on Zach Wilson. And then later on, the guy you mentioned earlier, Matt Milano, who continued his all-pro play, he got an interception just before halftime that set up a field goal to give the Bills a 10-point lead. Yeah, this is just a four-man rush, and so he's just sitting back in his zone, and here he's playing the middle of the field, and he's reading the eyes of Zach Wilson, and Zach throws an easy one here. Zach actually makes the, the tackle on the play, but this set up the Bills to put up points right before the half. All right, now we have to flip it over and take a look at Josh in the game. Let's talk how they can clean things up. Josh making this throw way down the middle, and it started with this interception on third and eight. Yeah, here it looked like Josh has had enough room to run for the first here. It's third and eight. You're in your own territory. You know, you're giving the ball here to the Jets inside their own five-yard line, and he's looking to make a play down the field, but you have Whitehead back there just playing center field, and I thought this was a play that he could have just ran for the first and, and kept the sticks moving early in the game. And then Josh did it again. He looked deep for Stefan Diggs. Now tell me what happened on this interception. Again, the Jets are just trying to see if Josh is patient enough. You know, you have the too high shell, and, and look, he's trying to split the safeties. There's pressure in his face, and Josh will learn from this. You know, it's Monday Night Football. Points were tough to come by, and, you know, he throws it up there, and Stephon Diggs is his most trusted receiver. But when there's two guys back there, it's hard for him to, to play defensive back back there, so to say, where he bats that ball away, does everything he can, but it was too easy of a play for Whitehead. He makes the over-the-shoulder catch, and the Jets get the ball at the 20-yard line. And then the third and final interception came on a third and short when he was looking for Gabe Davis, and this looked like a really good defensive play. It was. So the Jets are in cover two defense, and so generally that safety is going to be high, and Sauce Gardner is towards the flat. So Josh thinks, I can use my arm strength and I can fit this ball in there. Problem is there's nothing stressing Jordan Whitehead, and he reads Gabe Davis's route. If that's an out and up, you know, this might be a touchdown because Jordan Whitehead is selling out fully once he sees the deep out by Gabe Davis, but he guesses correctly and he makes Josh play. This is a really good play by Whitehead here. Eric, thanks so much for breaking this down for us. We're going to catch up with you next week. Appreciate it. Yeah, looking forward to it, Steve. When we return, we look at how the coaching staff and scouting staff of the Buffalo Bills come together. Then later on, we crunch some numbers in Sportsology.
great job the whole process appreciate coaches i know you guys went out on the road a lot of guys sometimes it worked out we got them uh sometimes it didn't um but appreciate all y'all's work scouts you guys did a great job the symmetry that we have um, created between the two departments and the staff that's in here that's that's a little bit unique around the nfl where there's always a line between scouting and, and coaching but here it's very thin. I think that's it's healthy. That's, that's what a lot has allowed us to do what we do at such a high level. So appreciate you guys for that. Appreciate y'all. Great job, everybody. It's unique, I think, in the NFL where you can find such symmetry between two departments that are vastly different, but so alike working towards a common goal. It's not that way everywhere. We, you know, we know that. He and Sean and I have been in the league both over 25 years now. And so when you have what we have as far as the symmetry between personnel and coaching, it just makes life easier for us to get the right players how here. Dalton, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good. 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 Ken Dorsey, nice, nice to meet you. Nice to see you. Dalton, how you doing? Good. How are you? Okay. Dalton, right oh, you're good right there, buddy. So this is number 19 on these formal interviews? Yep. Saved your best for last? Yes, sir. You ready to roll? Yes, sir. All right. I think we've done a pretty good job with the, getting our personnel staff to understand who to, who to bring to the forefront. And then at the end, now we're going to bring the coaches in to be able to put stuff on the board and teach them our language, see what they can learn. How many drops this year? Uh, two. Two? Yes, sir. Was there a theme in either, in both of them? Uh, maybe looking up on the field on this one. <laughs> it hit me, right, it hit me right in the hands. Yeah, right. So that's a ball I should catch. All right. What's your biggest strength? Your one biggest strength that you would say coming into the NFL will benefit you as an NFL player? Honestly, uh, my ability to be a sideline, sideline guy. Okay. We definitely don't agree on, on, on where the guys are, but by the end of the draft board, there's a healthy respect of why a player ended up where he did, and it's – Everyone dropping their ego. It's not my board. It's not Terry Pagula's board. It's not Sean's board. It's the Buffalo Bills board that we built with the coaches and the personnel together. The Buffalo Bills select Dalton Kincaid, tight end, Utah. Two different schedules, pretty much. Uh, scouts' busyness is at a different time of the year than the coaches' busy schedule. But to be able to work towards a common goal and stay humble at the same time when things are really good, but also when you face some adversity, I think uh, is important to be able to toe the line together and see yourself through those times. Ultimately, we're in a town that, you know, has been close, but hasn't hoisted that trophy. And so, you know, that goal is always, you know, fresh and, and, and right in the forefront. Still to come on the Sean McDermott Show, we break down the next-gen stats in Sportsology. And later on, Coach previews the home opener against the Las Vegas Raiders. Sportsology is presented by ECMC. ECMC, bringing hope and healing to Western New York. We've got a wild one for you this week. Since 2016, in the entire NFL, there's been only four touchdown passes that have been released within one yard of the sideline. Guess who's had a couple of those? Yep, it's a guy on the roster who's athletic and can make something out of nothing. Josh Allen is his name. He hasn't had one or two, but three of the four that have happened in the last seven years. In the second quarter against the Jets, the Bills had a 10 play drive going and found themselves five yards out from scoring. On third down with a chance, the Bills rolled out in 12 personnel with Stefan Diggs aligned in the slot. Once the ball was snapped, Diggs ran a slant route to the left. Allen was flushed out of the pocket and scrambled to his right, so Diggs adjusted his route and followed his guy to the right to give him a chance. Allen saw Diggs and made an athletic five-yard touchdown pass look easy. Allen was .7 yards from the sideline when his pass was released. Check it out. This is what .7 yards looks like. The dude is an athletic freak. Oh, by the way, Allen was also traveling at 17.33 miles per hour when he released the ball. This is the fastest speed ever recorded by a passer since 2016. This was Allen's 30th touchdown pass on the run since 2020, which leads the NFL, and this was just week one. We'll see what QB1 has in store for us for the rest of the season. 
When we come back, Chris Brown and Matty Glab break down the Sunday afternoon showdown with the Raiders. Plus, Coach talks about what it will take to get the win in the home opener. Game Preview is presented by Independent Health. You deserve the red shirt treatment. Week two is here, a home opener against the Raiders. Matty Glab here alongside Chris Brown, and week two is all about bouncing back for the Bills. They're actually 13 and four following a loss since 2019. So a pretty good record there. And let's talk about some of the ways that the Bills can turn it around here for the home opener. First, we have to talk about Josh Allen and the turnovers. Three interceptions, one fumble against the Raiders. Sean McDermott talked about towing the line with Josh Allen, letting Josh be the athletic freak that he is, but not letting it happen at the hands of, of some of those avoidable mistakes. So what does Josh need to do in week two against the Raiders? He's got to calm down. Uh, I thought he was very frenetic and jittery in the game against the Jets. And to a certain extent, you understand that. You're going against a monster defensive front. There's pressure around you a lot. But there were times where there wasn't pressure, and he escaped the pocket unnecessarily. I think he's got to first calm himself down. When everything else is frazzled and going crazy, you have to be mentally calm. And I think he's got to get back to that and just stay emotionally centered. That's number one. Number two, I think he also has to recognize time and score. You know, we always hear in the workplace, read the room. Mm -hmm. He's got to read the field and understand time and score. I'm not saying don't take risk, but it's got to be calculated mm -hmm. risk for Josh. You know, play smarter, just like Sean McDermott was doing Monday night. Play smart, play smart, play yeah. smart. That's what he's got to do. And at year six, Josh knows better than that. Josh knows this is how I need to act in, in this scenario, in this down and distance situation. Let's switch to defense here because mm -hmm. run defense also has to turn it around against the Raiders. They gave up 172 rushing yards to the Jets. Brees Hall averaged 12.7 yards per carry, which is just a huge number for running back. Mm -hmm. And the Raiders have a guy named Josh Jacobs, who led the NFL in rushing yards last year, going over 1,600 yards. The run defense last year was pretty good. They allowed an average of 104 rushing yards per game, good for fifth in the NFL. So how can they get back to those ways? Yeah, it's, it's a different run front, though, because you have Terrell Bernard running it. And I think they were trying to get some of the kinks out last week. They also had to change their game plan completely once Aaron Rodgers left the game. Suddenly, they're playing eight-man fronts, something they don't normally nope. do. This is a nickel defense 95% of the time. It's a team that uses the fullback a lot, Jakob Johnson. They had 16 plays in 21 personnel, two backs, one tight end on 29 run plays last week. The Bills saw a lot of eye formation from the Jets last week after Zach Wilson went into the game, hoping that will make the looks more familiar, knowing they're going to see two back sets against the Raiders this week. All right, we'll see if they can turn it around against the Raiders. That's this week's game preview. Coach. You have your home opener coming up against the Raiders. They're coming out of a big week one win versus the Broncos. They came back in the fourth quarter to win by one point. What's the key to getting your team to bounce back and also, you know, getting the crowd involved in using that home field? Well, it's week two. And so uh, we got a chance to play in front of our, our fans at home in Buffalo. And that's what we wait for. That's uh, it's a big opportunity for us to, to put our best foot forward, make the adjustments that we needed to make. Uh, over the course of the week and go get a win. And Jimmy Garoppolo, quarterback for the Ra Vegas Raiders, he won his Vegas debut. Uh, he went 20 of 26, two TDs, one interception, threw the go-ahead touchdown. Uh, they only threw the ball 26 times, but they did get the win. What kind of challenges do the Raiders and Jimmy Garoppolo present? Well, they're talented. Uh, you'll start with the, the receiving core. They have a one-two punch, and then they have Renfro in the slot and, and a couple tight ends that are formidable tight ends as well as, as, well as Jacobs in the backfield. So they've got that balance that you that you discussed is, is what we're going to have to contend with. Yeah, you talk about last season, Devontae Adams led the NFL with 14 reception TDs. Josh Jacobs led the NFL with 1,653 rushing yards. I mean, they got some dudes over there. What's more difficult to prepare for, an elite wide receiver or, elite, <laughs> or an elite running back? Well, or we, maybe both of them at the same time, I right? I think when you got both, it'd say, what well, do you want to commit to stopping the run? And all of a sudden, the receiver gets a one-on-one -on -one matchup, or do you want to stop the, the receiver? And then all of a sudden, you got a, a light box in terms of the, uh, the run game. So it'll be a big challenge for us. All right, thanks, Coach. Good luck this week and against the Raiders. Good luck in the home opener. I hope you play well. And for everybody at home, thanks for watching the Sean McDermott Show presented by Kaleida Health. And as always, go Bills. 
Final Thoughts is presented by Toyota. Toyota is the exclusive and official vehicle of the Buffalo Bills. Toyota, let's go places. The Sean McDermott Show is presented by Kaleida Health, the official health care provider of the Buffalo Bills. By Connors and Ferris, your workers' comp attorneys. Call 716-684-COMP today. By Toyota. Toyota is the exclusive and official vehicle of the Buffalo Bills. Toyota, let's go places. And by Independent Health, you deserve the red shirt treatment.